this is a, a presentation about intelligent video. Um, uh, Crestron recently, about 18 months ago, purchased uh, a company called One Beyond. Uh, have a, an amazing range of intelligent video cameras. We partner as well with Hudley as well. You can see out there one of our partners and uh, Jabra as well. Uh, again, this presentation is a little bit different. Uh, it's going to hopefully wake you up. Uh, and I say thank you all for, for getting up early and joining us. So let's crack on to it. Um, most of you and most of your customers in their organizations will have a room like this, a boardroom, uh, a long bowling room, meeting room, table, and always the most important person, me in this case, uh, sits right at the end of the table, furthest away from the screen and furthest away from the camera. So not only do they get a terrible view of the people on the far end or the tiny little Excel spreadsheet cells that are being presented on the display at the front of the monitor, but also, as I say, they're, they're a small little dot down the end of the table that the far end are joining via video and, and watching. So it's not a good experience for the person in the room. It's not a good experience for the people remotely who are dialing in who couldn't make it in. And as you get closer to the screen, you sit in the chairs getting closer to the screen, the, the lesser you are in the organization generally. So uh, again, the CEO sits at the end and the, uh, the engineers and uh, us junior people, we all sit closer to the screen so we will get a better view. It's the same for a boardroom as it is for a room like this, for example. So here's, here's a classroom. I'm here in front of the lectern presenting to all of you. Uh, we've got Jason here who's dialed in remotely to give a presentation remotely to all of you in the classroom. In this room, it's always a challenge as to where you put the camera. Do you put the camera facing out to you, the audience? So if you have a question, the far end, the people who aren't in the classroom, who are maybe distance learning, can see the person asking the question. Or do you put the camera at the back facing me, uh, the teacher, the lecturer, and uh, giving the presentation. Th there's no e exact answer for a classroom because there are multiple focal points. Unlike the meeting room where there's a big screen at the end of the table, in a classroom, the direction and the focus and the, the action could be anywhere. We've got a, a great story and a great anecdote we can tell at Crestron. Uh, Microsoft, uh, their uh, CEO, Satya Nadal, uh, in his boardroom, uh, he had a, a, a scenario like this where there was a lectern where the VPs would get up and stand up. And uh, there was one VP who never dialed into the meeting room. He never joined the meeting room uh, in person. He always dialed in remotely. And he said, every time I dialed into the meeting room, I get butt cam because they'd place the camera at the front of the room <laughs> shooting down the table. What's butt in uh, Swedish? Yeah, I could learn another word. What's, what is, what's ass, butt, bum? Rupa, okay, <laughs> there you go, I've learned another piece of Swedish. So every time this, this VP would dial in, he would get a shot of the Rupa uh, in the room. And, you know, we actually, the, it, the, the great story is, is that uh, Crestron actually has our Automate VX, our One Beyond in Satya Nadal's boardroom, the CEO of Microsoft has a One Beyond. And this VP then dialed in and said, oh my God, I see your face at last, um, rather than your Rupa uh, every time. Uh, again, the challenge is, is that for the people in the room, the experience that they get is, uh, is not always great, and the experience that the people at the far end get is not always great as well. So if you're watching it in a laptop, or if you're sitting in the room, the experience you get is not always uh, the best in the room. I'm just going to close down a few applications on my laptop because it seems to be going a little bit slower this morning. It's clearly not had the coffee um, that I'm having this morning. Let's just quit. Well, we're doing that. So the other challenge is, is that when you have a meeting room, you have a camera, it's a bit like a tennis match. So the challenge is, is that when someone is talking, like me at the end of the table, everyone is looking at me, or you're looking at the presentation, obviously. And I'm the focal point of the room, and everyone's looking at me, and everything is great. And then the person on the far end says, I have a question, and then suddenly they all come to look at you. And then I say, no, 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 that's wrong, you know, that's, that's, that's wrong, and they all look at me. And then they look at you, and then they look at me, and then look at you, and look at me, and look at you, and look at me. And it's this kind of back and forth, back and forth, because the focal point is the screen and the camera at the end of the room. It's not all the people sitting in the room. And again, if you're dialing into this room remotely, you're seeing the back of everybody's heads. And, and certainly, um, uh, poor Ken here, who's a bit follically challenged um, on the right, and you're seeing this, this beautiful shiny dome. And I don't know, who's this Stein? What's his? You don't know, but he's again, he's starting to obviously um, go slightly bald. Um, 
but that's the challenge. You have this 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 challenge of, of this tennis match effect where if you have someone asking a question remotely, you have people in the room, the the conversation goes to and from, to and from. That's the, the problem for, for the far end, the people who aren't in the room. They're working from home, working remotely in a different office. Obviously, for us in the room, we're all looking at the, the person on a screen with maybe the content on the display next to them if it's a, if it's a dual screen setup. And, and it's, you know, this is a great scenario because I'm here full screen on like a 50, 60 inch monitor at the front of the room. But what I've obviously if there's like five or six or 10 people, we've all been in those Teams or Zoom calls where it's cut up into lots of little squares and you've got these tiny little squares. Most of them haven't even got their camera turned on so you just see someone's initials in a circle in Teams. So again, the, the challenge is always uh, a, a bad experience for the people in the room and a bad experience for the people not in the room. Now, hands up, who remembers these things? Did you, did you have the, these? Yeah. <laughs> Immersive, to, this is a Tamburg T3, so you should all know, you know this, is, this is this region up here uh, where it actually came from, a very Scandinavian uh, design. So the, the Immersive Telepresence device, $300,000 um, per end, and you needed two, obviously, or if not, you just get a big digital mirror like this where you can check your hair and make sure you look good. But the idea was is that you would have a life-like, life-size representation of each of the participants. And the anecdotes from the customers when we used to sell these back in the early 2000s were it was as if I could shake their hand. The hand was reaching out through the screen and we could shake on the deal and sign the deal um, between London and New York. And we'd save all this carbon and all this, this travel money in flying between London and New York by putting in this telepresence system. And whilst... The near end to far end interaction was really good because you were seeing the people, uh, I'm looking at that camera, you could see the people looking at you in the eye. When we always used to demo these, these systems to customers, we would always put the customer in the middle two chairs because that had the best camera, the best eye contact. And we, the engineers and the SEs, would always sit on the end of the tables because that was the worst contact where the table kind of bowed. And the other problem is, is that as you can see here in the T3, it was a straight table. So again, whilst the near end to far end was great, if I wanted to, if I was sat at the far end of the table and I wanted to talk to the person, I'd have to sort of look round the table and say, "Are you okay down there? What did you think of that?" No, that was great. And so again, it solved one problem and it broke another. As Stein talked yesterday in his keynote, um, whilst all of the people in the world of video conferencing were trying to solve and enhance this this near end to far end challenge, Microsoft were honing their uh, platform from LCS to OCS to Link to Skype for Business, and you know, we were talking to many customers in you know 2018, 2019 about you know this transition to Teams and this move to the cloud. Uh, and you're going to hear more of that. Stein's going to talk about you know the transition to the cloud uh, a bit later on. But a lot of customers were like, "Well, no, we like our Skype for Business. We like our on-premise server. It's all great. We love it. It's our server. It's our security. It's our management. This cloud thing is a bit." kind of way out there and a bit uh, a bit funky. We'll stick with on-premise. And then obviously in 2019, you know, every single news channel, this is the BBC, you know, uh, beautiful Fiona Bruce uh, there. And then, you know, we have our Id idiot leader, uh, this this idiot, um, who made us leave Europe as well, um, as uh, telling us, all we should stay at home. And suddenly, you know, we went from those long boardroom tables, these beautiful uh, classrooms, to then all having this kind of experience where we were all in Microsoft Teams and we all were sat on our laptops and we all suddenly saw uh, this view of everybody. We saw the head and shoulders view of everybody in the room. I see Charlie, I see uh, Jason in the same head and shoulders view as, as I see myself. And you hear a lot of competitors and a lot of companies talk about meeting equity or equality in meetings. It's a horrible term uh, that the same marketing teams use. But the idea is, is that we all suddenly see each other in the same, same view. You know, as I say, we, all s we don't get that long view of the, cl of the classroom or the boardroom table. We all have this, uh, this really nice close-up view of everybody in the meeting room. So how do we get that in a classroom? How do we get that now we're going back to offices? I had a great uh, anecdote that um, the, the Swedish, uh, you know, when COVID was here, you had to get two meters closer to each other. And then when COVID stopped, you could go back to being five meters apart again. <laughs> I, that was a great anecdote I heard yesterday. <laughs> I'm going to use that one uh, for the future. Um, 
Again, how do we go back to five meter separation when we go back to the meeting room? Uh, and how do we uh, how do we fix that? So uh, we're all talking about improving remote engagement. And that's what all these intelligent cameras, again, the idea of having a camera, a camera um, that can do some clever stuff. Again, I'm doing some clever stuff with cutting myself out of virtual green screen and compositing myself into slides and stuff like that. All of this is, is intelligence. It's all using video to do that. Now, again, there are lots of technologies in the cameras over the years that companies have put in there to try and enhance the experience. And I'll run through. You, you've probably heard of, of a few of these, but we'll just kind of go through them. So the first one is called group framing. And it's a technology that we put inside the camera. It's an intelligence we put in the camera that looks at the meeting room. So the camera takes a shot of the meeting room. You can see it on the left-hand side of the display here. And the meeting room, in this case, it's a, we've, we've put it on the, the long of the table, so it's it's firing out on the, the sort of landscape view rather than a, a down the, the table shot, doesn't really matter. Um, but the idea with this is that um, you, you've got uh, spare chairs, you know, we are five, we're, we're Swedish, we're sitting two meters or five meters apart from each other. So what group framing does, it looks for the face, it looks for the T of the eyes, the nose and the mouth, and it says, okay, I can see a person, I can see Neil, I can see Jason sitting in this room, but I can see nobody in the chairs over here, what I'll do is I'll just crop in tighter to make uh, to lose those two dead chairs on the, the left-hand side of me uh, and give the far end a better shot. This is great for, for meeting rooms that are very dynamic during the day. Maybe you've got two people in for a one-on-one -on -one meeting in the morning, and then there's a sales meeting with like 10 people in the afternoon, and then there's another meeting with like five people later on. No one ever gets the remote control, and no one ever kind of pans and tilts and zooms the camera around. Or if there is that one technical person that knows how to do it, knows how to drive the meeting room and use the touch controller or use the remote control, they'll then zoom into the, the end of the table, and then they'll leave, and the next meeting of 10 people will come in, and you won't see half the people in the room because they've left it zoomed in down the end of the table. So what group framing does is say it dynamically will adjust you know, for the different times of the day and gives people a, a better view of the room. What it doesn't do is it doesn't lose this chair in between us. So there's still a dead chair in between us and we're still quite small um, as, 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 uh, as figures. The next one is called speaker tracking. So again, same room, same scenario, uh, myself and Jason here talking to the far end. And this is great for very polite meetings. So Jason's talking at the moment, and then Jason will stop talking, and then I will talk, and I will talk, and then Jason will talk again, and then I will talk again. And it's a very polite meeting. Uh, I, the, the Swedes are very polite people, so it would work very well in here. It would not work very well in Italy um, or in uh, any of these fiery countries where they have these very fiery meetings. I, I get in a lot of trouble. Um, the, the comedian was was uh, was having some fun with different nationalities. So maybe the Germans. Maybe you go with that one. Uh, anyway. Um, so uh, speaker tracking is great if you have these very polite meetings where, you know, say you stop talking. And the interesting thing, there was a guy, uh, we were so doing the One Beyond demo, uh, the Automate VX demo in the room uh, next door yesterday. And he was asking about the, the delay. And all of the manufacturers will put a delay before it switches in speaker tracking because we want to make sure that it is the person who is speaking. We don't want it to constantly have that kind of tennis match effect because the people on the far end are just going to be like, you know, having these different strobing effects as someone leans back on their chair or coughs or something. It's going to suddenly switch and you'll get seasick at the far end if it's constantly switching. So all of the, the manufacturers of, uh, of speaker framing cameras We'll put in an artificial delay, two seconds, three seconds, to make sure that the person is the, the person speaking before it switches to them and then before it switches back. Now, CEOs don't understand that delay. CEOs will come into the room and go, look at me, look at me, look at me. Why is the camera not looking at me? And then suddenly it will switch to them because they want that instant feedback. But the trouble is, as I say, the people on the far end don't want that constant flip-flopping. So again, they put that in. The interesting thing on the, the One Beyond system is all of those settings can be changed and customized. So again, many of the other cameras out there will not allow you to go into the algorithm and change that. It's very, very granular on the solution we put. And again, that's your value as the partners and the designers of the systems that you're going to put out to customers is you can talk to the customers and understand their requirements and design that. And again, that's your value add. Anyway, 
That's speaker tracking. The new one, the new camera technology or technique um, that everyone's getting very excited about. It's got lots of fluffy uh, marketing names. It's we generally call it compositing. It's kind of what I'm doing here. We're taking video and we're cutting it and stitching it back together uh, and creating a new piece of video. You may hear it called symmetry. You may hear it called director AI. You may hear it being called dynamic composition, depending on which manufacturer is talking about, uh, about it. But essentially what it's doing is, again, it's using that kind of uh, facial recognition, the T, the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. It says, okay, I can see Neil. I can see Jason over there. But rather than cropping in on the left and the right of the frame, it actually can cut us out of the video. So it says, okay, I see you as a person. I'm going to crop you from the original 1080p video. I'm going to crop out that sort of 540 by 640 size of Neil. I'm going to cut out that same bit of Jason. I'm going to re-stitch you back together and create a new 1080p video stream, which I'm going to then send to Teams. I'm going to send to Zoom. And you see all these beautiful marketing videos on YouTube, on LinkedIn, of all of the competitors out there showing these lovely experiences where they're all looking at the camera and smiling and laughing away, at, you know, showing this brilliant, where they've got like six people all cut out and stitched back together again. And that's great for a marketing video. But much like the telepresence demo where I said, you know, we always used to get the customers in the middle and we would sit on the outside and fake it. All of those demos of symmetry, director AI, and dynamic composition, they're all fake. And I'll, I can show you, because we actually did a real one um, over in uh, New Jersey. So here's the marketing video on the left-hand side. We're all beautifully looking at the camera, laughing and smiling away. The reality is, is this. And again, this, you'll see the room in a second. So this is a normal meeting room. And as I said, there you go, long table, people sitting in the room. So again, all of our competitors will have you believe that this is the experience you get from that room. But what actually happens is that I'm sitting at the end of the table, Cara is looking at my right cheek, Lauren is looking at my left cheek, and Sam is looking at the back of Lauren's head. And that's the actual reality because cameras use light. And light can't go around corners unless you put a mirror in the room. So the camera can't go down the table, hang a right to then look at Lauren in the face, and then go down the table and hang a left to look at Cara in the face. The camera can only look down the table and see the people. So all these beautiful videos, and there's a brilliant one um, <laughs> from one of our competitors. They put the camera on top of like a 70 or you know, 65, 70 inch screen. So the camera's way up high. And you can see them all looking like this at the camera, their necks stretched out because they've all been told, don't look at the screen for the recording, look at the camera. So that you get beautiful eye contact and this beautiful marketing video that everyone's laughing and smiling away at. So they're all sat there. Again, you could go and find it. And they're all sat there like this going, <laughs> yeah, it's great, yeah. Because uh, they're all staring up at this camera that's almost on the ceiling above the 70 inch display. So again, marketing versus reality in that. The last one of these camera technologies, just, uh, just as a bit of fun to, to talk about, is called real-time tracking. And this is great where you've got a presenter moving around. Now, I have to sound very fixed because I've got two cameras here that I've got to look into. Um, but normally, you know, I'd be walking around and pacing around. The great thing about presenter tracking is, is, is in the old days, you used to have a camera person filming and, and tracking them with a, a real camera. But uh, now we can do that using AI, using uh, machine learning and the algorithms to say, okay, we see Ronnie's face. Um, we can see they're a person. We can move them around. The cool thing is, is with our partnership with the likes of Sennheiser, with the TCC2 uh, ceiling microphone, we can take the coordinates of the multiple microphone lobes in that microphone. And even if Ronnie turns around and looks at the wall or maybe is writing on a whiteboard, we can still track her. Because, again, we're getting the audio uh, triangulation data, the audio coordinates, as well as using, again, facial recognition. So we can tie the two together. So even if we can't see a face, we can track to that. Now, why am I showing you us? What's the point of this other than casting some fun at our competition and their, their bad marketing videos um, and uh, the showing you the different technologies? Well, all of the competitors, all of the solutions out there, bar none, can give you any one of these technologies at a time. 
So you get your lovely you know, video bar from one of the competitors, or you get your lovely Teams room systems from one of the competitors with their multi-camera um, uh, uh, camera in there, and you set it up as group framing. You set it up as presenter tracking. You set it up as uh, symmetry or dynamic composition, and that's how it stays. So the room will be set up to give you that view, to give you the group frame view, the compositing view, the speaker tracking view, or the presenter tracking view. Now, that's, that's great, but meetings change. As I said, the 9 o'clock meeting's got two people, and it's just a one-on-one. -on -one. The 4 o'clock meeting's a stand-up, you know, agile meeting where people are, are flip-flopping between each other, and then there's a, a bunch of Italians that come in for a crazy, fiery meeting in the afternoon. So you want the meeting room to dynamically adjust depending on the meeting, depending on the content. And, and spoiler alert, that's what you can see next door in the One Beyond, Crestron One Beyond room, and that's what we can demonstrate to you in real time. If someone stands up in this area, again, we've got this area taped off, we can say when someone stands in this area, presenter track them. When multiple people talk, have both of them on the display at the same time. And if loads of people talk, we can go to a wide shot. We can create all these rules, and you can create all these rules to the customer, and that's your value add as our Crestron partners to be able to go and talk to customers and create those solutions. Before I quickly go to the, the one beyond and show you how we solve that, I just want to talk about one other camera technology, which is, is kind of interesting. There's a, a new trend towards digital cameras, much like this one here, uh, or the one in your laptop, or again, the video bars or the USB cameras that you see. Now, digital cameras are brilliant because it allows you to do all this cool stuff, again, that I'm doing here, or again, do this kind of uh, cutting and chopping and compositing a video. Brilliant, you know, to have all these cool AI technologies. What digital cameras are not good at is distance. So again, this camera is a 4K camera. I can zoom it in, and every time I zoom, the resolution gets lower and lower and lower. So it's 4K at one time zoom, it's 1080p at two times zoom, it's 720p at three times zoom, it's 480p at uh, four times zoom, and, and so on and so forth. So the, the further you zoom to the people at the back of the room, the less pixels you have, the less resolution you have. And I did a demo um, when I was fat. I've lost quite a lot of weight since then, so I'm quite proud of showing this video because it shows that I have been working out uh, and uh, doing some work. Lost the paunch and the man boobs and uh, looking much better. Um, must refilm this. <laughs> Should we? we should redo this, really. Um, but uh, joking aside, th this, let's talk through what we've got here. So uh, there's one of our competitors' digital cameras. I won't tell you whose it is, but um, it's one of our competitors' digital cameras. Uh, on the right-hand side is our Crestron One Beyond uh, 20 times optical zoom. The new i20 and P20 uh, cameras are available from Special Electronics. Um, and hot off the press, Microsoft Teams certified now. So very excited about that last week to get that certification through. And then the one down the bottom, that's just a Logitech C930 webcam, just to give you a reference uh, of the corridor. And uh, I waffle on in the video. This is on YouTube. You can go and see it and play it to your customers. Uh, I'll just jump, rather than playing the whole thing, I'll just jump to a couple of points. So here, here we are at nine meters away from the camera. Um, you can see at the bottom how far I am away. Now you say, kind of say nine meters, that's quite a big room. Well, it's not really, because you think about the, the camera and the screen at the front, then you've got a bit of a space, then you've got the sort of six or seven meter table, and then the person sitting at the end. It's not that far away. Where does the most important person sit? Right at the end of the table, nine meters away from the camera. Does the CEO want to look slightly drunk and out of focus on the left, or do they want to look nice and sharp and, and pin sharp on the right? I'm guessing more on the right than on the left. We take this to extremes, so again, 10 meters, you can still see, uh, t uh, 12 meters. Uh, and there's a really interesting point in this video, and it wasn't, it wasn't um, planned, it wasn't scripted. Uh, and I actually didn't even realize or, or pick up on it and, until, you know, after doing this demo a lot of times. They, they say, the great they, uh, say that 80%, 90% of communication is nonverbal. It's not what comes out of my mouth, it's the smiles, it's the jokes, it's the laughs, it's the engagement with you, the audience. And if you're not in the room, for all the people who are maybe not in the room watching this presentation remotely, they want to get those cues. They want that nonverbal communication. Now, obviously, the resolution, the quality of the video really helps with that. So there's a guy that's going to appear in, this in a second. And I want you to look at both videos, the digital and the optical, and see if you can read his thoughts 
from his non-verbal communication. Okay, so let's just roll this. Um, so it wasn't planned. <coughs> I can drink some coffee at this point. But again, read his face, and then you can tell me what you think he's thinking at this point. So there's this weirdo, weirdo British guy. Here he is. What's he thinking? <laughs> I got, oh shit, <laughs> um, what the hell's going on in this corridor? I wanted to go to the toilet or to my lunch break and there's some idiot walking down the corridor trying to film videos. Uh, again, you can absolutely see and read his face uh, on the 20 times optical zoom on the right. You can't on the digital camera. And again, I'm not saying digital cameras are bad. Digital cameras are great. They allow you to do some really cool stuff. But when it comes to distance, when it comes to large rooms, nothing beats a piece of glass that you can move in front of a sensor to zoom in down the room. Um, and again, just a great demonstration and a great anecdote there. And obviously, again, we have digital cameras. You can see the new uh, Video Bar 70 out there. And to again, try and solve this problem, we put four sensors in the camera, a wide angle shot, and then narrow field of view shots, uh, camera sensors that we can then switch uh, cleverly and digitally to, to be able to do that and enhance that. Um, so again, go and check that out, it's out there, and again, available through um, the great guys here at Special. Um, but the real point of this is, is that <coughs> the idea that we've come to with Crestron is this idea of a multiple camera solution. And Crestron is one of the first vendors to have a certified for Microsoft Teams multi-camera solution. Again, it's in Satya Nadal's boardroom. It has to be certified. It's in the CEO of, of Microsoft's boardroom. These are some of the old cameras. We've got the new cameras now, the i12, the i20, the p12, and p20. But the idea is, is that we can put actually multiple cameras around the room, up to 12 cameras. And they can be a mix of NDI, they can be a mix of SDI that we can position around the room. <coughs> so wherever you're speaking, you're not getting that tennis match effect. The camera, there's always a camera 360 degrees around the room. And again, there's a lot of vendors that have got these new Pringle tin cameras that you put in the middle of the table, 360 degrees. It's like the inside looking out with those cameras. Crestron has gone the opposite route and gone the outside looking in. It gives us a much better view of the room. And again, using these optical cameras, we can get a much better distance view of that. We blend that all together with our Automate VX platform. And that allows us to take these 12 camera feeds in. And it allows you, our Crestron partners, to be able to develop these very, very interesting uh, layouts for your customers. So if your customer wants to be able to see the teacher on the lectern and the remote participants and you, the audience, you can create that layout for them. That's a value add service that you can provide. It's consultancy you can provide to your customers and create these different experiences. Not just one video, you can go in and design. You can make that video smaller, that video bigger, picture in picture, big screen, large screen, content, graphics, blend it, uh, brand it to their logo and create these experiences conversation mode, lecture style, picture in picture. These are all great value add options. Anyone can go and sell a video bar that you can put under a big telly in a room. There's loads of them out there. There's something like 30 odd video bars from the competitors out there. And any of your competitors can go and do that and go and sell those video bars and make 10% margin. What Crestron and Special give you is the opportunity to go and create these really unique solutions for your customers. Not only to be able to create these different designs for your video layouts, but also to create these different rooms and these different spaces. Again, anyone can do a huddle room with a video bar. Power, Ethernet, HDMI, you walk away, everything is good. But it's these really interesting rooms that we can create with sight lines. So not only can we put multiple cameras around the room, but you'll see in the room next door, we've got screens around the room as well. So again, not only am I looking at a camera when I'm looking across the room, I'm looking at the far end. So there's no this looking at them, looking back, looking back, looking in that tennis match effect, because everyone is in my sight line in the room. And it works the same for a classroom. Again, we, in the room like this, you're waving at me or are you waving at your friend out there? Okay, cool. All good. Hi. Um, so no more do we get butt cam. And again, this is all now certified for Microsoft Teams. And you can go and talk to these customers. There was, I was talking again to Patrick last night. He was talking about Swedish courts. You know, we we're talking about um, all these really interesting spaces and all these interesting rooms. And again, what Crestron and Special can allow you, our partners and our resellers to do is to go and have these interesting conversations and solve these complex challenges that customers have around 
divisible rooms. It's one day, one big room, and then the next day is three separate rooms. We can go and talk to them about these auditoriums, these classrooms, these training rooms, where we want to have multiple views, multiple angles, multiple screens, and using our AV over IP technology, using our intelligent cameras, allowing them to move into a space and live track them all together. So this is what we've got with Automate VX. This is what we've got with our sightline experience. This is what we've got with all of our great Crestron AV over IP solutions, all available from the great team here at Special Electronics. And it allows you to go and have those different conversations with your customers that differentiate you from your competitors who are just going to chuck a, an Android video bar underneath a screen. You can go and create a really interesting and complex solution. We call it uh, the autograph room, uh, jokingly, uh, when we talk about it. Again, Microsoft talk about a signature room, but Crestron give you one better than a signature because everybody now wants Arca's uh, autograph from uh, playing on stage last night, you know, because he's obviously a celebrity. So, um, again, we're providing you a better, more enhanced, more premium solution that you can go and deliver to your customers. Hopefully you found the presentation useful. Again, we've got it set up in the room. There's two sessions, I think one starting five minutes ago, um, and then there's another one this afternoon. So um, thank you for your time. Hope you found that useful, and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Tack.